Hello everyone and welcome to another guide presented to you by Chessy. Today I'm going to be going over Tempest. Uh, so I was going to start with reading up the abilities for you and explaining how they work. So you have the Glacial Blasts, which stuns one time on rank 1, stuns twice on rank 2, or th two and 3, and it stuns three times on rank 4. And you have the Elementals, which you will always be maxing out because the Elementals are increased health and physical damage every time you skill them and they're just way too strong to pass up on so that will always be your pro rotation the only time you would do anything different is if you're going to gank on level 3 and you need that extra glacial blast in order to score the kill then you could do an extra point in glacial blast and then you have the meteor which is one of the best skills in the game and people don't mention that enough I feel like especially on casts and stuff people don't mention when the meteor is down and how much damage it's actually doing because if you're putting down the meteor and keeping someone in place fully for the entire eight seconds you're actually doing six percent of their entire health pool per second in magic damage over the course of eight seconds so that's a lot of magic damage it's 48 percent magic damage of their entire health pool is pretty insane. And then we have the elemental void which is pretty self-explanatory, everyone knows how it works, pulls them in and it's a really strong skill. So with all of that said, I'm going to be going into a game and explaining to you how to farm with this hero. So what I do here in the beginning is that I'm going to be starting with a uh, ring of the teacher which will give you an extra edge in the woods basically because you will have the extra mana reg region and you will also have the extra armor on all of your creeps which is really good especially when you're just learning tempest and you want the extra improvement but even if you're a pro player with tempest i would still recommend going with the ring of the teacher first simply because you farm so fast and uh, what you want to do as well is that when you're 100 mana away from maximum mana 160 is when you leave the base uh, and you'll s you'll be a perfectly fine at full mana, just running up to the creep camp, posi position your elementals right outside of the spawn as well. Then you want to pull away a creep there like I did and run away, run in with it again to make sure that the catman uses his spell on your first set of creeps so you can summon a new set of creeps right afterwards without having the risk of getting the stomp on them. Um, some people like to stack this camp, some people like to just not stack it and just run away. I really prefer running to the second camp as fast as you can, stack this camp or you stack the, the easy camp. Either one of them just gives you two camps to work with right away, a lot of farm. And as far as keybinds from elementals goes, I constantly reapply the keybinds all the time. I click on the one, like, like I use my mouse to click on the one with low HP, to drag them out when I want to survive with them. And I also just keybind them all to control 5 all the time. Control 5 for the minions, control 6 for myself. So you're gonna see me doing it like there it is again. You just press control 6 for all the minions and myself, and control 5 for only all of the minions. I constantly do it all the time. And also, after you kill the first hard camp, you wanna ferry yourself some extra mana potions because you're not gonna last very long with only two mana potions in the jungle. So what I usually do is that I just kill the first hard cam and then I instantly fire myself four new mana potions which will usually last me to the mana ring. You just need to make sure that you do this fast because otherwise you're just going to be stealing the courier from your mid player when he wants to get his ball on and that's not very appreciated. And as you can see, a pretty good farm right now, hit level 4, 2 minutes into the game. It's really really fast. Key, I would say, to succeeding and farming fast is to not fuck up. If you die with your creeps, it doesn't matter if you die with a small spawn like I just did there, it doesn't matter too much. If you die before it splits, you lose two creeps, it just it hurts you a lot in the long run. And yeah, you just constantly want to be reapplying these keybinds because you really need to. As soon as I spawn them, in this situation as well, I would pull away one creep and run away with the other and just constantly reapply the keybinds all the time. So as soon as these elemental split here and respawns, I just select all of them and I press control 6 so I can easily control all of them. And I would also just select the rest of them without myself and press control 5 if I needed it to. And as you can see here, I'm going to be hit I'm going to be hitting level 5 at about 3 minutes of time and my GPM is 311 right now. And that's just a basic basic run. Alright guys, now I'm going to be explaining to you how to properly build your Tempest. 
there's only really one way to start it. I mean, there's two different skill build uh, item builds you can start with, and it's Ring of the Titian two mana potions like this, or you start for the Rush Ring of Sorcery, which everyone used to do, which everyone still does to some extent. But I just feel that Ring of the Teacher is slightly better to start off with right now. So after uh, after the landing phase, your items after the jungling phase, your items should look like this, and then af after that, I just go for the boots first. Then you have to ask yourself, what are you playing against here? Like, if you're up against a lot of physical DPS, you want to opt to go for the plated griefs to get m more tanky. And what I've started to do now recently is that I, I'm always going for Astrolabe on Tempest, basically. There's very, very rare cases where I don't go for Astrolabe, and that's if someone else in my team already has one, and then I go push book instead. But this is what I, I usually buy in the beginning. And oh, yeah, the build up for, for Astrolabe should look like this as well. So you start with the, with the Fortified Bracer, increase your HP as much as you can, and then just build up Mystic Vestments. So you can you can either go upgrade the boots before or just go straight bracer's vestments. You just want to stay alive as long as possible. Just don't die. So at this point, you choose plate greaves or steam boots. Just all, uh, again, depending on what you're playing against. Most of the games I use, used to go for plate greaves, though it is usually some some f uh, sort of physical damage in the opposite team. And uh, you go for the Astrolabe. Th this is the, the like tanky build of Tempest, which I us didn't use to run this all that much because back when I was playing in Complexity, we kind of had a different playstyle. Uh, I used to go more for the other item build, which I will explain later. But this is what I've had most success with recently, and I feel like the tanky battle build kind of Tempest is really superior right now. So when you get to this point, when you have these items, you again you have to ask yourself what you're playing against. If you're up against Pharaoh, Kraken, any of these heroes which will lock you down that you need a pushbook against, you go for the Tablet of Command. Otherwise, if you see that they have a lot of magic damage, that like AoE magic damage and stuff that you want to push against, that you so you want to try to break their base, you go should go for the Barrier Idol. The Barrier Idol also makes you really tanky. It's something that just makes you stay alive for that little, little extra longer so you can actually get your ultimate off without dying, without getting bursted down. Basically when you have these items you kind of force the enemy team to focus you and yeah, it's not really easy for them to focus you down so just stay alive for as long as you possibly can, try to get a big ultimate off. This is the item build I like the most right now. When you get to this point you can ask yourself what you again, what, what do you need? You need a tablet of command, you maybe need a shrunken head if they cancel your ult easily might even go for a rest of stone and of these items and of these items would do and yeah again portal key always always good on tempest works fine i'm going to go with the other item build as well so this is usu usually what you start with then rush for the ring of sorcery into boots start pushing towers as usual then just go for um, <coughs> the vest vestments is just Overall, really, really good. I usually buy the vestments on Tempest, even if you're gonna go for the blink build. So then you would, essentially, you would rush the blink, so you will have these items. And on top of the blink, you buy the shrinking head, so you can get a big ultimate off without getting interrupted. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this build. I li like it a lot as well. But for team-oriented plays, when you wanna push towers and you wanna get involved, I, I don't find this build very good at all. It's very, very rare that I build this build anymore. The only time I would a even consider going for this item build well, is if I'm up against, let's say they're running a long lane tri lane and I have nothing that can cancel my ult, then I would consider it because I could just get it, get it early and just crush their tri lane because they're going to have under leveled supports. Uh, as far oh yeah, as far as late game for this goes, when when once you have that, these items. Again, you choose between the steam, steam boots and the plated greaves on Tempest. Plated greaves if they have physical damage, otherwise steam boots if you just <coughs> want that extra HP. So when, when you're up with, the, up with these items, I would, if you have these items on you, I would only go for Restoration Stone basically. Maybe a Tablet of Command, maybe. But Restoration Stone is really, really good as well at this stage. So yeah, that's it for the as far as the item build goes. Okay, so in, in this game, I denied from the bottom lane before because we already have a strong duel made, we're running a suicide, should always deny from the long lane. 
Uh, I keybind my elementals to control 5, just press control 5, you have them all selected at 5, starting in this catman camp here. You want this catman to stomp your first set of elementals, as I said before. Make sure that they stomp your first set so you don't spawn on the new set right on top of the catman and the catman just kills you right away. I kill this catman right here, see I only have one mana potion on me right now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ferry myself some mana potions with the courier right away as soon as I can in order to not steal the courier from my middle players when they're gonna use the courier later to get the bottle. So just to begin and start stacking this yellow camp here. Stacking a, a camp with tempest always good. You kill stacks really easily as long as you don't fuck up and die with your minions in the beginning. Uh, so, yeah, I was a bit, little bit late this time with using the courier. It's just a scream, so... It's justified. Uh, just gonna. This is usually the route I I usually use. I start with this camp, walk over, either stack this camp or this camp right here. Uh, it all depends on which spawns you get and how fast I am over to the spawns. You just need to make sure that the stack goes off. And as I keep stressing, you always want to bind this all, all entire time. As soon as as soon as my creep is going to die here. When I us use uh, my spell to get new creeps, I just keep on them right away. So I'm gonna be stacking this camp to maximize the farm I can use. And as well, when you stack camp like this, it's important that you don't die with these creeps. If you die with the creeps and you have a stack here, you're gonna lose so much, so much farm. I'm pretty close to die with the elemental right there, but managed to survive. Just keep on focused firing. <coughs> the creeps, like you want to stand in the area out here like you don't want to have your elementals standing here on top of each other because if you do that then the creeps are just gonna nuke your creeps the entire time however if you if you stand out here and farm or down here and farm you're basically kiting the creeps all the time because they just run back and forth in and out of the spawn which makes it very very easy to farm so I'm just gonna keep them going here like as you can see right now I'm 300 GPM uh, still doing very fine. Have one mana potion, mana potion to go. Have a uh, courier coming with talisman of the exile. So I'm on my way to the mana ring already. Stacking the camp right here, making sure that you can maximize the farm on the map. Sometimes, as well here, I, as you can see, I take aggro of the keep creep camp with my hero, taking some extra damage, but. Pre preventing the Catman Champion from just killing my creeps right away. As you can see here, I take some heavy damage from the Catman Stomp, but as you can see, my elementals are about to despawn. So, and as soon as these elementals are up, select all five, all, all three elementals. Press Control Five. Make sure that you have control over the cam, uh, over your elementals the entire time. When they split, select everything. Control Six. So you can easily just press Six on your keyboard and maneuver all of your elementals and your hero. It's really important whenever you go for hero kills, for instance, because you want to be doing the full damage from your elementals this whole time. It's basically like 150 damage per auto attack if you get full elementals up. It's a lot of damage in the early stages of the game. And what what I see a lot of tempests doing in, as well in, in uh, TMM, just as with any other jungler, is that they just sit in the woods and farm, farm, farm. They just want to get a quarter to you right away, which is the completely a completely wrong way to play this hero. If you if you do that, you're just basically not, not only nerfing yourself and your farm because you can get more from taking towers, but you're also nerfing your whole team because you're not doing anything and you're just useless in the woods. So, when do you want to farm? When when do you want to gank? Like in this instance for hi right here, Svalso is doing a good job. He's having his boob out here, he's controlling the map, making sure that I can't come in and flank him with a gank. And so in this case, I'm just gonna keep farming. I'm not gonna even gonna go push the tower because my dad was doing. He's doing just fine on the lane. You have 320 GPM against 150 GPM wild soul. It's not really a rush for me to push on the tower right now. So I can just sit in the woods and farm up my mana ring, which is gonna come here. The Corey, I'm gonna fa also fire myself a health potion. I think no, not yet. I will fire myself a health potion. Just making sure that. I don't have to go back to the base basically. Yeah, I'm just sending the core over here to the observatory and buying myself a health potion. Just keep the presence up. Because the other other op uh, option I had here is to go base and refill my health and mana and then go push, but it's just gonna lose my time. I'd rather just sit in the woods as much as I possibly can, keep the maximum farming up time up. And as you can see, it's reflecting my GPM right there 370 GPM. 
we don't even have a kill on our team, we don't even have a tower kill. It just attempts to just really, really fast uh, of a farmer. Especially when you go for this Ring of the Teacher first. I, it definitely helps a lot. I've seen my GPM go up with at least 30, 40 more GPMs than I've, since I started using this build. And it, I mean, it also helps in general with just extra armor and extra pushing power. Creeps get stronger, it's just perfect item for Tempest. And at this point of the game, you really don't want to sit in the woods anymore. I will kill this camp right here, just because I, like, I don't really need to go push right this instance. I will just farm this camp first before I go push, just to make sure that I maximize the farm this entire time. Then, after after this creep, creep camp is killed, I'm just going to be making my way over here to push down this first tower. In general, you don't really have to wait until you have level 7 plus and max elementals to push. Now we got the kill on walls as well, makes it even easier to push. But in most games, you, I ju would just recommend you getting level 6 and then pushing whenever you have a good opportunity to push. And you want your mana ring to be complete while you push as well, most of the time. What you don't want to do, as I said, is just sit and farm a portal in you pretty much useless to do that. If you push down this uh, this Taiwan tower here at the early stage of the game, it's so, so, so easy to do with Tempest because your elementals push so fast. And if you push it down the tower, you increase your GPM with another 30 GPM or so, you get the extra map control that you need, and just makes it way easier so after pushing down this tower it's just, it's just gonna go keep pushing here basically i'm just gonna keep pushing for the second tier tower we have control over the map we're doing kind of good this game so in a normal game i would just go back into the woods at this point pretty important as well to note you stack and pull this camp to get lane control back didn't do that here because we're already in such a good state so i could just keep pushing when you have your elemental split and you're pushing creeps a uh, tower dive really fast. I'm going for the dive here as well. Killing the wild soul. Wild soul was about to drop. I'm running back in, just setting it up to get the elementals. Spawning the elementals before I use the elemental void in order to get maximized damage. We end, actually end up killing both, and I die, unfortunately. So that was that was what I wanted to show you as far as the gameplay goes with uh, Tempest. Alright guys, we're getting to the end of this guide, uh, I think I brought up all of the points I wanted to say, and just to sum this guide up, to give you guys three very important notes, don't screw up when you're jungling, it's very important, you keep your creeps alive, don't let them die, it hurts your farm so much. Two, don't be one of the guys who just sits in the woods to farm for his blink, please be active early game, build teamfight oriented items, push towers, gank whatever just don't sit in the woods and afk and three use meteor to its maximum potential meteor is a really 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 strong spell and very underused so with that said did you think that i would leave you guys without a tempus ultimate right so over to you breaky conger is very low so it's definitely getting a little bit of regen but here we go stinger go back in they want this conger kill will or g sports let them have it though I don't think so. They're just waiting for the right time. Dark Lily again. All ultimates are ready. There's a Taint Soul and Wild Soul. In comes Wits here. Not going to go in just yet. More action! Oh, oh my god! Big Blitz on the Trident Strikes! The Dark Blitz being locked down. Magnus with the eruption. And stay Grip on the park. Jesse with the ultimate. Oh, a big ultimate on top of the energy field. Down goes Dark Lily. Morax is going to fall. Magnus going to go down. Unbelievable turnaround coming up for Stay Green. Jesse with a big elemental void. Aluna's trying to finish off the kill to Tempest. One round attack, maybe. One more, one more. Oh, it's not going to be enough. Aluna, can she get the kill? No, she... Oh, Tempest actually stops his port. He comes back in. Down goes Aluna. Oh A quad kill for Keizu. Are you kidding me right there?